Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to do arithmetic series and the ancient Indian mathematics. Series are not new to mankind. Around 1550 BC, the Egyptians and Greeks, they were all using series. They had their own names. Greeks called them ecthesis, which meant setting forth. In India, series were used as early as 2000 BC. They were called Shridhi. Shridhi is a Sanskrit word which means succession of distinct things or progression. It was also called Shrini which meant a row or a line. I have always been fascinated by the beautiful problems which our ancient Indian mathematicians were solving on series. They do give us a glimpse of the prevailing time. Here in this video, our focus is on arithmetic series which were being solved by the ancient Indian mathematicians. So let's begin. In Vajasnai Samhita, which dates back to 1200 BC, you can see some arithmetic progressions. The first one, 4, 8, 12, 16, going up to 48. First term being 4, the common difference being 4 and the nth term being 48. It is an arithmetic progression. Look at the second arithmetic progression. 1, 3, 5, 7, 31. Here, first term is 1, common difference is 2, nth term is 31. They are called yugma when we have an even numbered series. They are called a yugma when we have odd numbered series. In Vajasnai Samhita. When we come to Brahad Devta Shrota Sutra, which dates back to 500 to 400 BC, you can see an example where the sum of an arithmetic series, 2, 3, 4, going up to 1000, is accurately given as 500499. Let's look at the Taitriya Samhita which dates back to 300 BC. You see a number of arithmetic progressions. The first one, 2, 4, 6, going up to 20. Here, first term is 2, common difference is 2, and the nth term is 20. In the second one, first term is 1, common difference is 2, nth term is 99. In the third one, first term is 4, common difference is 4, series is infinite. The third one, is also an arithmetic progression. Look at the fourth one. First term is 10. Common difference is 10. This is also an arithmetic progression. According to the Jain literature, there were formulas for the sum of arithmetic and geometric series as early as 4000 BC. So it means that during the Vedic times, the series were being used and the sum of terms of an arithmetic progression was being found. If you come to the later period, when the Bakshali manuscript was found in 1881 AD, it was discovered in a village near Bakshali and so it's called Bakshali manuscript. It's dated to 300 AD and there a lot of beautiful examples on arithmetic series are given. There the first term was called Adi, the common difference Uttara, number of terms Pada or Pad, the sum of series is referred to as Rupona or Karnena. For result they use the word Fal or Fulam. Now, I have given here two examples from the Bakshali manuscript. They have been given here in English for our understanding. In the first question, the first term is given to be 3 by 2, common difference is given to be 3 by 2, and the sum of certain terms is given to be 7000. And you are asked to find the number of terms. The formula which is used there does involve an 
under root sign and for this particular sum the value of n comes out to be fractional which shows that they were finding the sum of terms or the number of terms as fractions also. In the second example, we are given the first term to be 1, the common difference to be 1, n, the number of terms to be 19, and you are asked to find the sum of the series up to those 19 terms. Now, the way of writing in the Bakshali manuscript is the common difference is written as 1, the first term is 1, common difference is 1 and the number of terms is 19. And below that you can see a 1 is written all over which says that our values are all integers. So whenever they have 1 it means we have integers. Which means that fractional values were also accepted. And the sum is then given as 190. Again, 1 is written below that, which means that the sum is an integer value 190. Let's come to some of the books written by the famous mathematicians of, the, of different times. Arbhatya of Aryabhatta, which dates back to 499 AD. Brahmasvuta Siddhant of Brahmagupta, which dates back to 628 AD. Pati Ganita of Sridharacharya, which dates back to 900 AD. Lilavati of Bhaskaracharya, which dates back to 1150 AD. Ganita Komadi of Narayana Pandit, which dates back to 1350 AD. In all these books, which were taught at that time, Series is used as a fundamental operation. They are called Shriddhi Vyavhara. So now this shows that series played a very important role during our ancient times. What were the terms used by them? Let's see. Adidhan or Muk or Prabhav. These were the words which were used for first term. Ishtadhan for other terms. Antyadhan was used for last term. Chai or Prachai was used for common difference. Uttra for difference. Vridhi for increment. Sarvadhan, Shriddhi Fal, Shriddhi Ganita, Samkalita, they all were used for sum of terms. Let's see some formulas which Aryabhat, the Aryabhat 1, so there have been two Aryabhat. We are talking about Aryabhat 1. The formulas which you used, which were used by him. For middle term, Aryabhat used number of terms minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by the common difference plus the first term. For nth term, he used the formula n minus 1 into d plus a, this is the same formula which we use now also. And then for sum of n terms, he says it is number of terms multiplied by the middle term. Now, middle term you have just seen, the middle term was n minus 1 upon 2 into d plus a. If you write that and simplify, it is nothing but n into n minus 1 d by 2 plus a. Pull out the 2 and you will see it's the same formula which we use now. It's also written as n by 2 a plus a n. So this was the formula he used for sum of n terms. It was Mahavir the mathematician who first pointed out that the common difference d can always have a negative value also. That is, it has both positive and negative values. Let's come to some examples. The first question is from Ganita Sar Samagra by Mahavira. The translation goes like this. There were a number of Utpal flowers representable as a sum of series in an arithmetic progression, where 2 is the first term and 3 the common difference. 
a number of women divided their flowers equally among themselves. Each had eight for her share. How many were the women and how many were the flowers? If you see, the question says the flowers are in arithmetic progression where A is 2, the first term is 2 and D, the common difference is 3, which makes our arithmetic progression 2, 5, 8, 11. If we take number of women to be N, then that would mean number of flowers are 8 N, as each lady has 8 flowers. How does Mahavira solve this? First thing, he uses the formula for sum of n terms for finding the solution. According to him, sum of n terms is nothing but first term plus the nth term divided by 2 multiplied by the number of terms. On simplifying, we get the formula which we use nowadays. S is nothing but n by 2. 2a plus n minus 1 into d. s is the total number of flowers. We know that is 8n. Substitute s, a and d. We'll get 8n is equal to n by 2, 2 into 2 plus n minus 1 into 3. It's n which is unknown and we need to find. This n and this n will cancel. You will get on simplification n is equal to 5. So the number of women is 5 and flowers will say total flowers are 8 into 5 which is 40. So this is the solution which Mahavira gets. The second question is also from Ganita Sar Samagra by Mahavira. The translation of the question is, a person travels with velocity beginning with 4 and increases successively by the common difference 8. At the same time, a second person travels with a velocity beginning with 10 and increases successively with a common difference of 2. When do they meet? Now, Mahavira uses the formula velocity into time is equal to displacement. First, let's see what is the arithmetic progression of the velocity of first person. For first person, A is 4 and D is 8, the common difference. So his progression is 4. 12, 20, 28. For the second person, A value is 10 and D is 2. The progression is 10, 12, 14, 16. Let us say they, when they meet, the time is n units. Then, for first person, the nth velocity will be a plus n minus 1d, which is nothing but a for the first person is 4 plus n minus 1, d for him is 8. And for the second person, nth velocity, because when they meet, it is time of n units. So, velocity will be same formula we use, but now it is 10 plus n minus 1 into 2. Now, come to the formula v into t, the time is equal to the displacement x. What we do is we will Equate their displacements or the distance because when they meet, distance is the same. So we have 4 plus n minus 1 into 8 
multiplied by the time n is equal to 10 plus n minus 1 into 2 into n. The time n when they meet their distances traveled are the same. Now n and n will cancel. Simplify n comes out to be 3 units. So this is the solution which Mahavira gets. The third question is from Bhaskaracharya's Leelavati. The translation of the question is, on an expedition to seize his enemy's elephants, a king marched to Yojanas the first day. Say, intelligent person, what increasing rate of daily march did he proceed since he marched his foe's city, a distance of 80 Yojanas in a week? Now, for this question, we see we have the A value, starting value as 2. A is given to be 2. D is something which needs to be found. The rate of daily march, the increasing rate of daily march, that needs to be found. It's also given that he has marched 80 yojanas in a week, which means that S, the sum is 80 yojanas. And the number of terms as he has walked in a week, our N value is 7. I'll just write here as it's a week. So n value is 7. Now when we use the formula for sum which Bhaskara did, it gives us s is equal to n by 2 2 times a plus n minus 1 into d. Substitute the values. 80 is equal to 7 by 2. 2 times 2 plus 7 minus 1 into d. On simplifying this value of d, comes out to be 22 by 7. This is what Haskara gets. At this point, I'll again repeat, all of them have used the same formula for finding the sum of n terms. The fourth question is from Narayana Pandit's Ganita Komudi. The translation of the question is, the continued product of first term, number of terms and the common difference is 12. If the sum of the series is 10, find it. If we take the first term to be A, number of terms to be N and common difference to be D, then the formula which Narayana Pandit has used for sum is nothing but S is equal to N by 2. 2a plus n minus 1d. If we take the 2 on the left, we get 2s is equal to n. 2 times a plus n into d minus d. The value of s and open the bracket we will get as s is given to be 10 in the sum we have 20 is equal to 2 into n into a plus n square into d minus n into d 
Now, we are also given in the question a into n into d is equal to 12. If we take this to be a first equation and this to be a second equation, how does Narayana Pandit solve this? What he does is, he takes a values. He says that let a be 1. When he takes a to be 1, from 2 he gets, we get n into d is equal to 12. Put in 1. If we put in 1, we will get 20 is equal to 2 times n. A value is 1 plus n, n into d minus n into d. Now we are taking n into d as 12. So we will get 20 is equal to 2n plus 12n minus 12. This gives us n value as is 16 by 7. Now, from 3, we get d as nothing but 21 by 4. This is our d value. So, what do we have? He took a to be 1, n comes out to be 16 by 7 and d is nothing but 21 by 4. So one solution is this. Now if you have a doubt, you can just check whether his values were correct or not. Let's see. We will multiply all three of them. A into n into d you know it should give us 12 because that's given in the question. If we get, it means one of the answers which we've got is correct. Now see, this will give us 4, 3, it gives us 12. Second thing, what he does is, he tries taking A, I'll call it case 2. Here, he's taken a to be 1. When A is 2, he gets 2 into n into d is equal to 12 or n into d is equal to 6. When he substitutes in the formula here, 1, he gets substitute in 1, he gets the three values of A, N and D as A comes out to be 2, N comes out to be 13 by 5 and D comes out to be 30 by 13. This is the second answer he gets. And this also, you can check, gives us 12 when we multiply A into N into D. Now, he also tries by taking half the values. If he takes A to be half, it does not work. He does not get the solution.
Let us now see how Sridharacharya explains arithmetic series. Sridharacharya uses the geometric figure trapezium to treat series. He calls it Shridhi Chetra, in English a series figure. He says, as in the case of an earthen drinking glass, the width at the base is smaller and at the top greater. So is the case with a series figure. What does he mean? He says, if we take two straight lines, let's call the top line as the face denoted by F, the bottom line by base denoted by B. Now, join the two ends of the line this end, this end, with the bottom line by threads and pull this thread out. We will get a trapezium. Here we take the flank sides to be equal in length. Let's say that the altitude of the figure is h. Then he says that the partial areas of the series figure for successive cubits of the altitude. Now, here I'll say, tell you what cubit means, but he says that by finding the partial areas of the altitude, we get a series which is nothing but an arithmetic series. And this area of the altitude increases successively by a common difference, which is called by him as chai. Now, if our base B is negative, the threads are pulled crosswise and we get two triangles, one over the other. So, he says that the partial area for the series figure for successive cubits of the altitude form a series whose first term is Adi, Adi here we take it to be A, and increases successively by the Chai, which is nothing but the common difference D. So, if we write what he is saying, the area of the figure will be nothing but a plus a plus d plus a plus 2d it goes on up to n terms. The altitude of the figure is nothing but the number of terms according to him and as the number of terms is n, so our altitude is n cubits. Now what is cubit? Cubit is a unit of length which was used at that time. It is 18 inches or 46 centimeters. It was nothing but the length of a forearm. Now, according to him, the area of the first cubit is A. The area of the second cubit is A plus D. Area of the third cubit is A plus 2D. And it goes on. So, what is the area of the figure? We have to add all that. And the formula he gives is B plus F upon 2 into height. That is base plus the face upon 2 multiplied by the altitude. Here B he gives as A minus D by 2. And F he gives as A plus N minus half multiplied by D. Now if you substitute B and F and the height N. Because we know that altitude is N given by him. Here we see it is n. We will get the sum of the series which is nothing but n into n minus 1d by 2 plus a. This is the same formula which we are using now. Another interesting formula which he gives is sum of the series a plus a plus d plus a plus 2d goes up to the n plus p by qth term. Now, what does that mean? He has found the sum of n terms plus the p by qth part of n plus 1th term. And he says that s, the sum of n terms plus p by qth part of the sum of n plus 1 term, n plus 1th term is nothing but n by 2 dn 
plus a plus a minus d plus p by q multiplied by dn plus a. We will solve some examples given by Sridhar Acharya and that will clarify what these formulas mean. The first question is, what is the sum of five terms of the series whose first term is 2 and common difference is 3? What of one term and half term? Let's do the first part. Here, we are asked to find the sum of five terms. So, n is 5. a is given to be 2. The common difference d is given to be 3. So, when we use his formula, b is equal to a minus d by 2. b is equal to a minus d by 2. We get 2 minus 3 by 2 as half. We use the formula for f given by him, which is a plus n minus half a plus n minus half multiplied by d. Now this gives us 2 plus 5 minus half into 3, which is nothing but 31 by 2. So we have got B, we have got F. Now what is B plus F by 2? This will be nothing but half plus 31 by 2 divided by 2 and this comes out to be 8. According to him, sum is nothing but b plus f divided by 2 into the altitude h. We know here b plus f by 2 is nothing but 8 and our n is the height which in our case is 5 so the sum comes out to be 40. This is the first answer. In the second case he is asking what when our n is 1. In that case our b will be nothing but 2 minus 3 by 2 which is half same as our previous case f will be nothing but 2 plus now n is 1 so 1 minus half into d which is 3 and this comes out to be 7 by 2 and altitude here for us n is 1. So, our sum will be nothing but sum of one term will be nothing but half half plus 7 by 2 multiplied by 1 which comes out to be 2. So, the second answer is 2. And in the third case, we get the solution as 5 by 8. Here now, our n value is half. So, here our area or the sum will be nothing but half. I'm just writing all the values directly to plus half multiplied by half and that will come out to be 5 by 8. So these are the three answers we would be getting. Let's come to the second question. What is the sum of one fifth 
of a term of a series whose common difference is 5 and first term is 2. So we are given a is 2, d is 5 and n is nothing but 1 by 5. What will be our b? You know the formula for b is a minus d by 2. That is 2 minus 5 by 2 which gives us minus half. And using the formula for f which is a plus n, in our case it is 1 by 5 minus half multiplied by d for us d is 5. Simplify this will give us 1 by 2. So b plus f comes out to be 0. So our sum will be 0. This is the solution. In the third question we are asked, if a labourer gets one and a half in the first month, one by three more in succession in following months, what will he get in three and a half months? Now here, A is given to be one and a half, which is nothing but three by two. D is given to be one by three. And we take the integral part of our N. So here N will be three. Now substitute all the values in our formula s is equal to n by 2 dn plus 2a minus d plus p by q dn plus a. We will get the sum as 24 by 7. So here you saw that by all the ancient Indian mathematicians what were the formulas used, what were the terms used and what were the questions they were solving. One thing which I find interesting is that they had not limited themselves to a integer value of n. The references I've used are given here. Thank you for watching. The next topic will be geometric progression. You can watch my website professorpreetibajpay.com for all other courses and lot of problems for practice under remedial. Thanks once again.